and I actually got Van Morrison his first singing job. When I was 11, I, um, I bought my first guitar. In Dublin's first city, where the girls are so pretty. I used to listen to people like Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley, and I, I was just besotted by music, absolutely besotted by music. As a former member of Fox, Yellow Dog and Van Morrison, Herbie Armstrong was well underway to musical success. At the time I was 14, I was in my first group in Ireland, Northern Ireland, and um, we used to do a lot of touring, and we used to get the, the job of playing with um, quite famous people in those days as a backing group. Uh, they would send over tapes of the music we had to learn, and um, then they would fly into Belfast, Northern Ireland, and we would rehearse with them for the day, and then we'd go on tour. And I was like 14, 15 years of age. So that was my first real experience of playing professionally. And then as I got older, I, I joined a, a, an orchestra, quite a big orchestra, in Belfast, in a local dance hall. Just bit by bit, I sort of, you know, progressed in music and, um, you know, doing what I love. After finding success with Belfast talent The Wheels, in the mid-70s, Herbie joined Fox, which led to Armstrong and Young writing chart-breaking record Georgina Bailey. From there, Herbie and Kenny Young formed Yellow Dog, which saw just one more night reach the top ten in the UK charts. After vast achievements and various appearances on Top of the Pops, Herbie then set his sights on something bigger. And then I eventually ended up with Van Morrison, playing guitar for Van Morrison, and that, that was great. That was a really great experience. And um, he asked me three times to write with him. I turned it down because we were good friends. I played in his band, and I thought, he's a very temperamental person. And I thought, if I, if I write, if I get that close, writing is a very, you know, it can be difficult. It can be very difficult, and you can get very frustrated by it. And I didn't want anything to upset our friendship. And I thought, maybe I, maybe I couldn't spend hours and hours writing with him. I could spend hours rehearsing with him, playing in his band. Playing in renowned bands isn't the only thing that Herbie is noted for. In 2011, Armstrong became part of one of the UK's biggest TV shows. The only reason I did Britain's Got Talent, I'd written a song, and a friend talked me into doing Britain's Got Talent. Just in case Louis Walsh or Simon Carl would hear the song and sign it up for one of their acts. So I, I went on, I did, I did it. And um, Amanda Holden was on the panel, and she stopped me doing my song after a few bars and asked me to do something that they all knew, everyone knew, that it, I might have a better chance. So there went my song. I didn't get a chance to do my song, but I did Britain's Got Talent. I, I got the semi-finals, which, which I feel very proud about. Despite seeing much success from appearing on Britain's Got Talent, Herbie caused a great deal of controversy and many people were in uproar, suggesting that he had already had his chance. Many viewers turned to social networking sites to vent their frustrations and various newspapers published articles fueling the debate. Despite the growing controversy, many members of the public expressed their support and were won over by Herbie's musical talent and kind heart. Herbie is well aware that many people don't take reality TV shows like Britain's Got Talent seriously, which can often steer many musicians away from attempting to be a part of these shows. You may laugh, you may poo-poo Britain's Got Talent and all these shows, but I'll tell you what, it's a great experience. It really is a good experience. And, um, and it doesn't belittle your music. You know, if you're good and you can do something well, it's a good platform to, to show what you can do. So 
that was a good experience for me, but I also got an album, a solo album from the show. It, it didn't do anything great, it didn't do anything major, but I, I've, got, I've got that for my children and my grandchildren. Herbie's success throughout his musical career is proof of how easy it used to be to stand a chance in the music industry. However, with the industry continuing to change, it is becoming harder for musicians to be in with a shot. Record company, companies are closing their doors. They, they just don't seem to want to know about new talent. But to send a record or a tape or anything to a record label today, it usually gets, it gets binned. It, 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 they don't even listen to it. I don't, know, I don't know why, because in my days, if you had any an ounce of talent, the record companies would listen to you. They give you a chance. They let you make a single. They put that single out to the radio stations to see if the radio stations liked it. So thousands of bands, thousands of bands over, over maybe a span of 10 years or whatever, were becoming mega, mega big. Radio stations playing new bands all the time. And now I tune into Radio 2 and I hardly ever hear anybody new. I don't know about Radio 1 because that's not my kind of music anymore, but you know, you don't often hear new talent on the radio and you don't often hear record labels signing up new talent. I had a young band called Noise Next Door uh, from Lee Park, Triplets. They had a number 10, number 11 record in the charts and they were discovered in here by a friend of mine who's a producer, who produces Celine Dion and Brand Ferry and a lot of other people. I phoned him up, he came down, signed the young boys up. They did really well, but then Warner Brothers, major label, bought them out of the small label that they were on, that they had the success on, bought them out for a million pound. They didn't see any, well, hardly any of that money, but Warner Brothers lost them because they got caught up in a big mega organization who, if you don't go to the very top, they drop you. There's, there's the odd artists like Mumford and Sons, they broke through, but they paid for their own album. They did their own album, paid for it themselves. Obviously, I, I, I'd have thought they couldn't get a record deal or they wouldn't have done that, but they, they paid for their own album and now they're mega, mega, sold millions of albums. So therefore, one of the doors that, that can be opened is the X Factor, is the voice, is Britain's Got Talent, because record companies actually do tune into those programs and they watch those programs and they look out for new talent from those programs. And you can be very, very lucky. Some record executive might just be tuning into YouTube and say, oh, they're good, I like them. There's a lot of great artists out there, great musicians, and record companies, they can't, maybe it is they can't afford they can't afford financially to take the risk of putting a lot of money into a project that may not work, that may not get played. So um, it's hard out there. No matter how hard it is, keep going, because you never know. Towards the end of the 90s, Herbie took a new direction along his musical path and opened a music venue. I opened a big music venue in Sheffield called The Boardwalk and the Arctic Monkeys, the Arctic Monkeys used to play there when they were teenagers, when they were young. And that, that was the first sort of major venue they played in. Um, and I used to have lots of good musicians at the boardwalk. So I always kept in, in touch with my music, my music roots. I always had music going right through my life. The Arctic Monkeys produced an album called Beneath the Boardwalk, which contained demo tracks and the name was in reference to Herbie's music venue. Eventually, I sold up in Sheffield. I moved to Hampshire, Rollins Castle, and I opened a pub. And people said, why did you open a pub? And uh, well, because I could still do my music. I could have bands in the pub. I could get up and play with the bands in the pub. From time to time, I still get old friends dropping in who are session musicians, and they're still doing their thing, you know? As with many musicians during Herbie's musical career, there have been many opportunities that have arisen, which at the time 
Herbie chose not to do. I, I'm not the kind of person who says, oh, I regret that or regret this. But there are things that I didn't do that I, I wish I had done. I was offered a job at the bank called Chetro Tull. And in the 60s and 70s, they were a world ban, a big world ban. And uh, they were all millionaires. They made millions. And I was offered, while, while they were big, they were big when I was offered the job to play guitar for them. And they told me I could have been a millionaire within a year. But the music wasn't my kind of music. And Ian Anderson, the singer, he's a friend. I, I, I know him. I know him well. I still stay in touch with him. And, um, but because it wasn't my music, my kind of music, I said no. Um, I turned down the Bee Gees. I was offered to play guitar for the Bee Gees. It, I was doing something else at the time. It wasn't making me money. But it was something that I loved to do. So you will down the line, maybe make wrong decisions, but don't regret it. Don't, don't, don't feel, oh, I wish I'd have done that, because who knows where that would have led to? And who knows where things will lead to that you do do, that your heart says you should be doing, and you're, 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 you feel that's what I want to do. And money doesn't come into art. It's a weird thing. It's great if you make it. Great, great if you make it. You make a lot of money and you're doing what you love. But what you do, you do music because you love it. And believe me, you don't go into music thinking, I'm going to do this to make a fortune. You go into it because that's what you want to do. It's in your heart, it's in your soul. It's what you want to do, be a creator of music. Follow that. And who knows where it'll lead? When you're still in my heart.